praise the diabolous Jackie. Hello there, Sarah from Seventeen once again, introducing you to my Darkness Two. Don difficulty video walkthrough. This is chapter eleven, and this is saying goodbye. And it starts off pretty quietly, as we're going to be visiting the grave of Aunt Sarah. And uh, this graveyard looks pretty damn nice. Some of the lighting on that first area I thought was really nice. But it doesn't last. Everything goes to shit and everything kicks off. And uh, we're going to be stalking the, the next boss through the cemetery and killing a bunch of enemies. We're also going to be coming across some new enemy types. And for the most, this is a pretty challenging area, and it's actually pretty long, so if you were a little pissed off at the length of the last few videos, this one is a good, nice, heavy segment for you, and uh, it kicks off right now. So there is the, the next boss, and what's going to happen is we're going to be encountering him throughout this next section, and the best thing to do is just chuck gravestones at him. They do a lot of damage, they'll save you ammo, and as soon as you hurt him enough, he will stop firing projectiles at you, and he'll summon a bunch of enemies. As soon as the enemies start coming, take them out how you've been taking them out through the rest of the game, and uh, as soon as you've killed those, you'll be able to move on to the next section, and we're literally just chasing this guy down, killing enemies, chasing this guy down, repeat ad nauseum. And you'll notice it is the Brotherhood, so they will be slightly armoured, they will be a bit more resilient, they will have the guys with the torches, they will have the guys with the shields, and the dudes who fucking disarm you that we're going to soon, soon see. And um, you do start this level with double guns, and if I'm honest, I don't really like the double guns on this game, but I can't deny they're effective. It's just, you do you definitely lose a lot of precision. Which is why you'll notice I pretty much run through the game with a single gun at all times, because I like ADSing, and you're not able to do that with the dual stuff, because it kind of just does what it wants. But, eat the hearts, keep on building towards your upgrades. If you see a shield like that on the floor or on the wall anywhere, you can use it as, as like a car door to cut people in half. It's super effective, so you want to be on the, the lookout for it. And you'll notice that the things in the environment are glowing purple. And uh, the reason that they glow purple is obviously because it's telling you that you can throw them, but I also have the ability where when I throw an object in the environment, it's, it's a little bit more explosive than it normally would be when it impacts. And if you have that ability, it's going to make the stuff that you throw a little bit more damaging to the people around it. So it's a cool ability to have and well worth purchasing. And uh, as per usual, you want to make sure you shoot the lights out or they will cause you havoc during the gunfights. Don't know if you noticed them, but the Darkling was just chilling out on the bench there, looking like a cool kid. And uh, that is one of the shield dudes, and uh, a general melee guy, so... As per normal, stun the melee guy with, with your whip, then finish him off with an execution, get you 30 points of experience. And, um, take out the rest of the guys as you want. The, the swarm is fantastic against the dude with the shield, so is the gun channeling, it will kill him very quickly. And uh, just play it safe, don't rush too much, use the cover, and just be aware that as you move forward you're going to be triggering spawn points, so get ready to back up a little bit, so that you can use, you know, the crypts and things, the gravestones to, to block some damage. And then as soon as you see the life bar on the screen, it means that Bragg's turned up again, and you'll have to throw a couple graves at him to make him push on to the next part of the level. And that is pretty much what we're going to be doing here, people, for the next few minutes, because... It's just a case of forcing this guy into the final area and having a fight with him. But on the way, you will be fighting a ton of dudes, so just get aware for that. But this is the first level, I believe, that you're able to get the Striker Assault Rifle. And if you find one, pick it up, because it is one of the best guns in the game. If you have the, the upgrades to make your guns more damaging, then that thing is like a 1-2 to two bullet kill. If you headshot people with it, they die super quickly. And if you use gun channeling while you have that weapon equipped, it will strip down every single enemy in the game. It is an awesome weapon. One thing I will say though, people, is... Uh, as I've previously mentioned, the gun drops seem to be kind of fucking random at times, and on my recording run, I don't pick the striker up on this level till very late, and on my first run through, I got it super early and fell in love. So, just be aware, it might be slightly different for you as it was for me. But instead, I'm going to talk about the, the co-op mode on this game. And uh, the first cool thing I liked about it when I played it last night was you can do it solo. You don't actually need co-op people. But one thing that must be said for it is it's a little bit boring on your own. You definitely want to be playing it with people if you can because uh, 
what they are is the kind of self-contained stories where you, you're hunting down gangsters and killing dudes and completing miscellaneous tasks. And it's in the framework of the world, but you play it as one of, I think, four characters, and each of the characters has a, a different relic that they use as a weapon. And the only problem with it is they've got one execution animation to do pretty much everything with. So as you play with them for like 10-20 minutes and you're doing the exact same thing every time to get the hearts, it's, I don't know, it's easier to do with the tentacles because it seems to be quick and easy, but with the other guys, it just seems to, you know, you feel like you're doing the same thing because they don't seem to have the same diversity as Jackie does, so it does feel a little, little bit repetitive. But it's cool you can play it on your own because there's a lot of achievements for it, so the achievement halls are going to be well happy. They don't need anybody else to, to help them get those those points and it's a cool idea uh, it's got a little bit of progression because you can buy skills and things but it does not have a level up system or any kind of ranking which is a bit of a shame because it would have been nice to get experience and, and like level a number up and get prizes maybe but what it did make me think of is, is games these days with with co-op components and multiplayers and and pretty much staples of games that you think would have and it leads me on to a discussion of, of horde mode because I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day and uh, we were on about how when Gears of War created Horde Mode which was a completely obvious and and fantastic idea that you kind of kick yourself had never been thought of before but as soon as they brought it out everybody wanted a part of it so every game from Army of Two to, to Halo to like a bunch of different things implemented their own version of this mode much like any mode that comes out that's successful will be imitated like Left 4 Dead, like like everything. And we kind of got onto the topic of games that probably should have had a hard mode and would have done it well, but didn't. And why they didn't have them. And it, and it kind of pushed us forward to, to, to a DLC discussion as well. Because have you ever noticed how certain games get DLC and they're always the games that you don't want DLC for? It's like... Anybody that played Kane and Lynch 1 will agree with me wholeheartedly when you say nobody wanted fucking DLC for that game. That was a bad game in almost every conceivable way. It was a fantastic idea. It had some great, great little things that you could do, but it was in the framework of a bad game. And it killed it. And they brought out a whole bunch of DLC for that game and no fucker wanted to play it. It was just strange. And then there are games that don't get hardly any DLC and they're almost the perfect platform for more content. And the one that jumps out to me is Dead Space 2. Because as a lot of people know, I recently did my hardcore playthrough of Dead Space 2. I had a lot of fun with it even though I had like chest palpitations. It was terrifying. But it reminded me of how good that game is, and it also reminded me why that's on our game of the year list when we did the podcast version. Because it's a terrific game, and anything inside that universe that I could do extra, I would have done. And if it wasn't for the fact that the multiplayer was an unbalanced piece of shit at times, I'd probably play that a lot more than I do. But they got one piece of DLC, it was called Severed, and it was a really cool little, you know, prequel piece of content that introduced the character from the other Dead Space games, and kind of showed you his story. It wasn't very long, there was only two chapters, but they were cool, they were fun, and I enjoyed them because I enjoy Dead Space. And it was released, I think, in in like March. It was released the month after the game came out, so within a month of this game being released, it received its one and only piece of DLC. So, at that point in time, people were probably still occupied with the game. They weren't even bored of the game, and they released additional content, which is awesome. But they didn't release anything else. And it seems like such a missed opportunity. And I know in my heart of hearts that the developers are probably already working on, you know, building the more assets and working on concept designs and story and all that good stuff and, you know, pre-production for Dead Space 3, whatever that's going to be. But at the same time, it would have been nice for them to support such a good game a little bit better. Because to bring this full circle and to, to make it a, a proper discussion... Dead Space 2 did not have a horde mode, and if there was ever a game that could do with a horde mode and do it well and make it fun, it would have been Dead Space, because this is, in in essence, a survival horror game where ammo is important, life is scarce, and enemies are terrifying in numbers, and the whole part of a horde mode is facing insurmountable odds and giving you that buzz of overcoming it, getting your experience or whatever, getting your ammo and all that good stuff and then putting your back to a wall and remembering the Alamo and 
it didn't have that and it would have been so good to just have that kind of tension it and just just imagine you know you you're blinking red on your back you've barely got any life you're coming down to your last few shots there's a bunch of necromorphs crawling towards you because you've severed the legs and the spitters puking and all that good stuff and you manage to strip them down and you're pretty much completely out of ammo and you hear that scream as the brute just drops into the arena and starts charging at you and there's nothing you can do it's it would be so epic and so cool and they, they just they missed an opportunity and to me it's madness because Dead Space 2 is one of my favourite games it's, it's fucking amazing and the first one is scarier a whole lot scarier but the second one is, is it's the jump from Alien to Aliens it's just it's the James Cameron from the Ridley Scott and a lot of people prefer Ridley Scott's film a lot of people prefer James Cameron's film but Suffice to say, I mean, you can't even disagree that the second one was action-packed to the balls. And that's exactly what Dead Space is like. And uh, I can't wait for the third one. I just wish it had a hard mode. It, it, it deserved one. But, yeah. And if anybody else has got any games that they think or passionately believe should have had this kind of treatment, feel free to drop a comment and, and give me a convincing argument. Because I like to see people's opinions. I like to see people who have got big opinions as opposed to the dudes that just nod and shake their head like the obedient sheep they are but uh, this section here you'll notice I've got the M16 and I do like the M16 in this game uh, you want to use this section to to find as much ammo as you can pick up as many guns as you want because the next video is going to be taking on brag and the, the more equipment and the more ammo you have the easier this fight is going to be and um, it's not that difficult because what's gonna what's gonna happen? Excuse me. Is you're gonna fight him for a bit, then he's gonna send bad guys at you, then he's gonna come back and you'll fight him and kill him. And the only problem when the bad guys turn up is a car shines its headlights on you, and the headlights can be notoriously difficult to shoot. And sometimes you can get lucky when you throw graves at them and when you shoot them, but other times you can fire a full clip, and uh, in the immortal words of Poncho, you will hit nothing. But there is a checkpoint in between the waves so if you do die you don't have to do the full fight again and hopefully with a couple of tips that I'm going to show you you'll not have any issue with the boss fights because I found a, a really powerful way of fighting dudes and uh, it involves the swarm so if you've got the swarm that's going to help you a lot and I don't think I actually use it on this fight but I use it against the last boss to, to great effect but I'll discuss that in a, in a later video so Bragg has turned up once again I'm looking currently for something to throw at him because I can't see any of the tombstones and he generally bounces two or three times between rooftops before he settles and then he starts throwing his his big purple ball of doom freezer style so you want to just find anything heavy and, and launch it at him if you can and uh, after a couple of hits once you've lowered his life enough he will flee he gives you a lovely visual cue and uh, you know that he's done there his life goes, it completely disappears, he breaks the entrance to the next area and uh, Mike Patton gives us a lovely little bit of exposition. But that is the striker that I'm now holding if you've never seen it. If you ever find that gun people, pick it up, it is sexy, it is a delightful machine and um, just push on forward to the next section of the level because this is going to be moving towards a shop, probably buying some abilities so there's no real strategy needed. And uh, all that's left to be said is thanks for watching, I hope it's helping, and you take care now.